Now here's where things get controversial, at least for some. We've already seen how Jesus fulfilled every part of the law of Moses. He fulfilled the moral part by living a perfect and holy life. He fulfilled the ceremonial part by dying as a sacrificial lamb in our place. And he fulfilled the social part by never sinning against another person. So let me say again, Jesus fulfilled every part of the law of Moses, all 613 rules perfectly. For that reason, Paul writes, Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. And the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us. These verses establish that Jesus fulfilled, accomplished, or fully satisfied the law of Moses on our behalf. We couldn't keep all those 613 rules, but he could. And because he fulfilled all of it on our behalf, that means there's nothing left for us to do but put our faith in him. Think of it like this. Imagine God's requirement for eternal life was to complete an impossible 613 piece jigsaw puzzle. He gives us this puzzle and says, Do this and you'll have eternal life. But we can't. It's literally beyond our capabilities. No matter how hard we try, there is never any chance we will ever manage to complete the 613-piece puzzle perfectly. So we are without hope. We have been given an impossible task. Then imagine Jesus comes along and he can do it. So he sits down beside us and he puts the pieces together for us. And when it's done, he takes it to God on our behalf and says, I finished this for insert your name here because jesus has already done it for us there's literally nothing else we can do there's nothing we can add there's no credit we can claim all that's left for us to do is humbly graciously and thankfully accept what jesus has done on our behalf and put our faith in his finished work to save us that's what jesus did by his life death and resurrection God set an impossible task that no man could fulfill when he gave the law of Moses. But though we can never meet its demands and therefore never hope to earn eternal life by our own efforts, Jesus could. He came down beside us, lived a perfect life, fulfilled the requirements of the law and then died on our behalf shouting, It is finished! He fulfilled all the 613 requirements of the law of Moses. He completed it on our behalf. And by completing it, that means there's nothing else for us to add. There's no credit we can claim. All we can do now is humbly, graciously, and thankfully accept what Jesus has already done for us and put our faith in his finished work. Therefore, the old law of Moses is actually obsolete. Hebrews 8 says, If the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need for a second covenant to replace it. But when God found fault with the people, he said, The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. They did not remain faithful to my covenant, so I turned my back on them, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbours, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. And I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. When God speaks of a new covenant, it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. Here the Hebrews writer is saying, You know that prophecy God made through Jeremiah all those centuries ago about a new covenant? Well, Jesus is it, and the old covenant is now out of date and obsolete. God had always planned to make the law of Moses obsolete and to bring in a new dispensation of time. Paul writes, But the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. The law of Moses was a temporary measure until Christ. 
I've heard people argue that because Jesus kept to the law of Moses, so should Christians. Listen to Paul when he writes, When the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Jesus had to live subject to the law of Moses so that he could fulfill it and thereby set us free from it. He lived under it so that we don't have to. Later on the Hebrews writer says, He cancels the first covenant in order to establish the second. Under the old covenant the priest stands before the altar day by day offering sacrifices that can never take away sins. But our high priest Jesus offered himself to God as one sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Paul writes, By his death, Jesus ended the whole system of Jewish law with its commandments and regulations. So we're reading over and over again that the entire law of Moses has been cancelled or ended by its fulfilment in Jesus. That means that all 613 rules, the Ten Commandments included, are obsolete. This is a shock to many Christians who believe that the Ten Commandments are still binding somehow. This is particularly a shock to the many legalists who insist on living by the law of Moses even today. So I will attempt to anticipate and answer their objections in the next section.